Beekeepers typically lose anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of their colonies every year, and that's normal. That's generally accepted colony loss. But this year, many beekeepers around the country are reporting elevated colony losses. In fact, as many as 50 to 90 percent of their colonies. So if you do the average, there are estimations out there that, that the United States has lost as many as 30 to 40 percent of the colonies that we have. Honeybees actually host a number of different pests and pathogens, and we've had these pests and pathogens in our honeybees for a very long time, ranging from fungi to viruses to parasitic mites. And traditionally, when these things infest our colonies, our colonies slowly dwindle and die over time, and we rarely get massive die-offs. What makes colony collapse disorder, or this new disorder that we're seeing, different from everything else is the colonies appear strong and healthy as few as two to three weeks earlier prior to the colony collapsing. And what happens is you'll go from a colony full of bees to a colony with no bees at all, or maybe just a handful of bees over a very short period of time. The colony collapses. At the University of Florida, we're cooperating with the Florida Department of Agriculture and working on varroa mite studies. Even with colony collapse disorder present in the United States, varroa mite remains the biggest bee problem in the world and a leading contender for causing these colony collapses. So we're very keen to look at varroa mite effects and how to control varroa mites and give beekeepers an option to get rid of these things in their colonies. What's very important to consider and to remember is that CCD or colony collapse disorder may be an amalgamation of bee problems and if that's the case, any bee scientist studying anything that kills bees is working on colony collapse disorder by default.